Fox 17 Rock Interview, my special guest today, John McEwen. You probably know him as a founding member of the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Uh, you know, he's, he's got so many solo albums, uh, a producer, film scores, awards. Um, you know, there's so much, you know, three million miles, 9,500 concerts. More like 10, but go ahead. And uh, radio <laughs> DJ, CEO of a company. Yeah, it's, inter it's weird, I don't know. <laughs> When you play the banjo, you can't live on a banjo budget, okay? Well, you know, in 50 years in the business, John, it, it's so great. You know, it's an honor to have you on, especially to talk about, you know, your new album. Thank with, you. With a few of your closest musician friends I made got in friends, Brooklyn. I got friends I haven't even used yet. <laughs> Is that the next album? No, that's a good one, though. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about this new album. It just came out in September. Well, you know how, how you hear, like if you hear a bird in a tree, or uh, uh, drop your keys on the ground, or a car honks behind you. That's how people hear. And records, they're fine. It's a good art and craft to have a right and left speaker, but you're listening to the music coming out that way. And this guy, Chesky, Norm Chesky, says, you need to make a, an album for my company. And I says, well, what kind, of, what kind of equipment? He goes, we use one microphone. What? This must be a really cheap company. <laughs> <laughs> What, one speaker too? No, it's a one special binaural microphone that's mounted in a dummy head, like a Christ test dummy, and everybody has to gather around it. Like, the singer will be here, the bass here, over there the drummer, guitar, violin back there, somebody playing the penny whistle. You gotta back up a little bit. And when you record, it captures it in a, in a 360 degree feel. How incredible. And when you play it back, it's just like you're there. You said that. Yeah, the, the, the sound was so incredible on the whole album, and I, and the songs. I mean, you know, you could hear all the nuances. And and what I found listening to your album was, you feel like you are in a live setting with it. And and it sounds to me, I thought you'd use like a myriad of microphones and you know enclosed booths and everything else. I've gone through that school of recording <laughs> with, you know. Uh, what's, it's Tuesday, are we doing the bass drum today or the snare? Are we doing the bass or some of the vocals? Right. Or let's, let's put a new scratch guitar on. And it's like, <clears throat> this is insane. You sit down and play the song and record it. And all my recording that I've done, I've tried to do as many first takes as possible. Right. Even back with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band on the Uncle Charlie album, there's a classical song, The Hardest Thing I Know, Opus 36. I told my brother, I'll be in at 11 o'clock, and at 11.05, I'll be done. And if I haven't got it, I'm not going to keep doing it. It means I don't know it. Right. That's why you're known as the string wizard. No, I don't know. That, that's <laughs> what some reviewers say. Thank I, you. It makes like me it. sound good. But, uh, you know, I play some unusual things on my instruments. Well, you know, That's I because think, I can't play the things a lot of the really good people do. Oh, no, no, no. But you're, you're a multi-instrumentalist, and, uh, you know, and, and what you play always seems to fit. And, Thank and, you. And I think it adds texture. And, and, you know, like we were talking earlier on the news, you know, even uh, when you produced uh, Steve Martin's album uh, that won awards, uh, The Crow. The Crow. And, we and, won a Grammy with that. Thank yeah. you, Steve Martin, for letting me do that. <laughs> and then you brought him on your album. You yeah, know. well... Steve and I went to high school together. I met him in Disneyland. Isn't it weird that this, you meet some people, and he's been a lifelong friend, and we met in Tomorrowland. Wow. And had lunch in Tomorrowland. <laughs> both trying to get a job at the magic shop in Disneyland, which we finally did, and worked there for th almost three years, doing tricks all day. How and amazing. Stuff. And it was, and I've known the guy 56 years. Well, now let's talk about, you know, we talked earlier when we were off camera, John, we talked about, you know, your radio and everything on, on uh, Cirrus Radio, mm -hmm. the Acoustic Traveler, but I also want to bring up your website. The, or, my personal website? Yes. Is, my mother thought of the name John McEwen, and I added, <laughs> I said, Mom, I'm going to put .com to make it a website. Well, who's dot? <laughs> and I said, no, that's how you do it. Oh, you mean the news website? Yeah, your news website also, which you are I just, the I knew you that. Are I just sneaked in the website the plug for me, okay? Yeah. No, I, uh, five years ago, I partnered up with a, with a lady named Ruthie DiTucci. She wanted to have somebody be helping her getting to music people. She has a website, syndicatednews.net, or SNN.bz. And we're up to six million hits a month That's now. That's amazing. And a half a million unique hits. And it's political news, music news, entertaining things. But the thing that she's able to do is to get the whole story. Wow. If there's some kind of legal case going on, and NBC, some kind of legal case going on, <laughs> and some of the other networks right. might 
only say, oh, here's what he said, and they say a sentence, she'll have all eight pages. Wow. And you decide. Yeah. Don't let the people say one thing, and this is what you should think. No, here's the whole report. So it's not as censored and edited, then, as some might be. So, you know, I want to bring up also, because uh, obviously I, I've read a lot about you. Um, you know, you were, uh, you were actually at a concert when you, you, you were watching a band and thought that, hey, I can do this when you started, decided to start the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. No, it's not quite. We, well, we started in August 66, uh, 1966 at noon, uh, no, one o'clock, and uh, I had a pool, and it was Southern California, a bunch of young guys trying to figure out what to do. They'd played together a lot, and I, I kind of moved in after two months and said, yeah, let's go for it. I'll get my brother to manage. And that worked until after Paint Your Wagon. We spent four months on the set watching Lee Marvin and Clint Eastwood <laughs> learning how to sing. It was really a great experience. Uh, but uh, after that, we broke up. Jeff said, I'm done. I yeah. don't want to do this. And, and so we kind of broke up. I didn't want to play with another lead singer, so I kind of... Six months later, we're standing in a club in Los Angeles, actually at Huntington Beach, the Golden Bear, watching Poco, who, by the way, was called Pogo at the time, <laughs> until they got the lawsuit from Walter Lance, you can't use Pogo. Oh, my gosh. So they changed it to Poco. Yeah. And Jeff, it was like this. Those guys are good. <laughs> we play that kind of thing. Yeah. Why don't we... Let's, it was like that. <laughs> we both kind of at the same time. That was awesome. Let's call Jimmy and let's go get Les yeah. and let's find a singing drummer. And, and it started, we made our fifth album, Uncle Charlie and His Dog Teddy, and that was the album that had three hits on it. And you guys just had an anniversary album that came out this year as well, right? Yes, it was uh, recorded at the Ryman Auditorium in uh, September 15 last year with a bunch of guests. The Dirt Bands, uh, Jeff has always picked good songs, and some of them come from writers, like Rodney Crowell, uh, John Prine, different people, and we had them wow. come out and kind of do half the song the way they did it, and then we did the other half. How incredible. And it's a neat album with a yeah. DVD of a bunch of the music that helped establish the imprint of the group. Certainly. Well, you know, and with Made in Brooklyn, will you be touring on this as well, John? I hope so. I've had messages from all the people on it saying, we want to take this on the road and play it. It was two 12-hour sessions, and we did 15 cuts. And some people say, how can you do 15 cuts in 12 hours? Well, it was 50 years in 12 hours. <laughs> well, and I heard the record producer that the record company's girlfriend also likes this album. The, the owner of the company. The owner of the yeah, company, yeah. yeah. So that's a good thing, right? That's a real good thing. <laughs> but he does too. Norm Chesky has made 400 albums, and he's wow. telling me this is one he's really proud and of. You've and you've made 40. With the band, uh, actually, I think it's 46. But wow. it's OK. I mean, that's the job. Yeah. I don't have a job. I'm not like you. I can't come to this building <laughs> and get any you money. You can come here anytime. You're not paying me to do the interview. Well, you know. You're getting paid to do it. <laughs> And you're worth every penny. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Well, be sure and check out John McEwen. Uh, the new album is incredible, Made in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, so many great guests and everything, but also the talented string wizard right here. Oh. Uh, some of his best in this. I mean, just every song, um, you know, like with, uh, with the Johnny Cash song. With I had his John son. Carter Cash. I said, John Carter, I want you to do I Still Miss Someone as an homage to your father. Fromage, homage, omelet, do fromage, homage. Anyway, <laughs> as, as a tribute to your father, because he doesn't do it like his dad. He does his own version. John Cowan, my favorite singer since I met him, and uh, just he knocks a, a song out of the park, She Dark the Sun, that Bernie Ledden wrote right. before the Eagles started. Bernie yeah. wrote this fantastic song with Gene Clark. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I put it together so that when you get to number six, you go, what was that second one I heard? I can't, what, what's the next one like? And you right. get to number 10, you can't remember what six was, and you gotta go back and it's listen just, to yeah, it. Yeah, and I was listening to Excitable Boy today, it's like, going, what a great song. It's like yeah. in all of them, just, I mean, you know, just the textures and, and the vocals and the instrumentation, it's just incredible. I think you've really, uh, you've made a hit here, you know, and uh, You know I how exciting so live well. TV was to watch when you actually saw those All in the Family comedies and things like that? Yeah. That's what this was like. Everybody knew we are going to play this song one time, everybody all at once. You're not going to be able to fix little blip, blips or whatever. So don't make any. Right. And 
and it put everybody on edge. Standing next to either Martha Redbone or John Cowan while they're singing, right. it's just like, yeah, this is exciting. Much different than having the lead singer in the headphones <laughs> and sitting there being the only guy in the studio right. overdubbing to it. Right. That's fun, and that's a craft, and that's sure. an art. And, uh, 50 but, years of expertise to bring you Made in Brooklyn. And not just mine, by that way. Uh, everybody here was a real lifelong pros in the folk music, acoustic, Americana, bluegrass world. Right. Well, the one and only John McEwen. Be sure and pick up a copy. Made in Brooklyn. Check out his website so you can see him on tour. We hope to have him back in Nashville very soon. And uh, what a great album. Thanks for watching the Fox 17 Rock Interview.